Woodworker Anonymous here, and uh, once again talking about dust collection. Um, you know, my shop doesn't have a dedicated professional dust collection system. Uh, I've been getting by with shop backs, and it's getting to the point pretty soon where I'm going to have to do something because I'm spending more and more time out here and doing a lot more stuff. Anyway, I want to go over this. This is a dust deputy. You see a lot of people make videos about creating uh, these things, and they, they show videos of using these things with, like, five-gallon buckets. I mean, listen... I'm running stuff through the router and running stuff through the planer. Uh, you know, I am making a lot of dust here. And five gallon bucket is not going to cut it. You know, that's less than the capacity of the shop vac. So why would I do that? Um, you know, so I want to have a large reservoir. So I've been using a trash can. You know, I started with one of these plastic trash cans, but. You know, the suction generated by these things collapses these plastic trash cans. You know, especially if you have any kind of drag on the system. If you get a partial clog in the line, it's just going to, boom, suck that thing down and smash it to pieces. So I said, hey, get a metal trash can, put this lid on that, and put your dust up on there. There we go. I did that. Well, look, guess what? That's still not strong enough because it'll still do this to your metal trash can. Now, this is no joke. Um... You know, something happens inadvertently where you clog the line when the when the dust deputy's going, and that that volume, that extra volume, because we're having like a big canister instead of like a small five gallon bucket. The bigger that volume, the more you know volumetric pressure is applied to it. Um, <clears throat> so here we go. Now, it, it keeps crushing this thing. So what I did after first couple times, I stuck a rib in there. And that seemed to help a little bit, but this can has been crushed and pounded out so many times at this point, it's lost all its ability to withstand anything. And this last time, it just completely collapsed on me. So I went out and bought another one of these things, okay? And this time, I'm going to reinforce it before I start using it. I'm just doing it by adding these ribs to the inside. Nothing fancy here. Just, I built these three ribs. Uh, they take about 15, 10 minutes apiece, really. Um, I just... Uh, took some half inch plywood I had, drew some circles, took them to the bandsaw and just cut out, you know, thin strip, half circle strips. And then, you know, laid those half circle strips together, put a piece of wood underneath them, glued it, tacked them down, and there you go, you got a circular rib. You know, just did it graduating, uh, down at the bobs, like 18 and a half inch diameter. That's about a 19 inch diameter, and that's a 19 and a half inch diameter rib. So, they're equally spaced. You know, they're just pushed in here right now. I, I might put a little bit of caulk around here just to keep them from slipping around or moving a little bit, but those ribs, I think, should be more than strong enough to, to prevent this thing from collapsing itself. I, I clogged the line in this, uh, it's a five horsepower shop vac, but um, you put it on that dust deputy and that's what happens. So, hopefully, that'll fix it. Still got the big reservoir, so I don't have to empty it every day. And uh, it does an excellent job, it really does. Um, this was working really well, except for the collapsing problem. So hopefully it fixed that. And we got the, the strength inversion. These things are pretty cheap, so. Uh, anyway, once I get tired of this whole system, I'm sure I might have to look for a, a dedicated real dust collection system. But this actually works fairly well. And, uh, you know, if you're thinking about doing something like this, here's a here's a good way to get a decent sized uh, reservoir, really cheap, and just strengthen it up a little bit. So something to think about.